Hello everybody, today we will revisit our top custom card series with another 5 entries. As we said before, the community is always brimming with new ideas and there have been many great cards made since our last video. Just a small reminder, all of these were taken from the main artifact subreddit and r slash custom artifact, and some cards have been reworded slightly for clarity. Also, with the amount of cards made every day, it would be difficult to comprehensively compare everything out there. This is just a small sampling of cards that caught our eye. So, let's get right into it. Ricky, a black hero submitted by Jay Kubowski, has 7 attack and 5 health. His continuous effect, aptly named Backstab, allows him to gain half of his attack when attacking a unit that is not blocking Ricky. This ability is a great combination of theme, working hand in hand with function. It makes sense that when Ricky is sneaking around the board dealing his damage, him backstabbing a hero would deal more. Furthermore, the premier card that deals damage to a hero not in front of them is Gank, a card that is thematically central to the idea of sneaking and getting a free hit on a hero, further adding to the card's flavor. Overall, a great hero. His signature is a 3 mana spell called Smokescreen, allowing you to select a unit and randomly changing that unit and their neighbor's arrows. Thematically here, you are confusing them in the smoke. This signature is powerful and makes up for his weak health. Smokescreen itself would be a very cool spell to see since it basically is the opposite of Ventriloquy. We can even take this concept further and add a keyword called Stealth, where the arrows have to be generated away from the hero if that hero has stealth. Going back to the hero, another change I would make is a slight modification to his passive, becoming instead gain X attack when attacking a unit that is not attacking Ricky. This way, if you play smoke screen on Ricky, he will be able to gain the bonus from his passive against the target that is right in front of him, as they are no longer attacking him. In its current iteration, it only affects cards like gank, since even if a card's arrow is pointed away from Ricky, it is still technically blocking him. This change would still work like the original variation probably intended, but have some additional synergy with his signature. Nevertheless, this is a great card, very thematic and interesting. Next up is another black hero named Ramuiz the Devious by Delta 17 V2. He has 7 attack and 7 health. This hero has two abilities, first of which introduces a new keyword, Carry X, where X is the total cost of all equipped items on the hero. Having at least a minimum of this cost will enable the hero's carry effect. Ramuiz's carry 15 ability is Slayer, an active ability that condemns a creep on a cooldown of 1. This ability is very cool. It is a clever way to introduce additional goals within Artifact wherein you deck your hero out to unlock his full potential, sort of like a quest. His signature card assists him in pursuing this quest. A 3 mana creep called Ramuiz's Pawn with 4 attack and 2 health, sporting a death effect that gives you 6 gold. Untested Grunt sees play already, and this just costs 1 more mana for an additional beneficial effect. Furthermore, extra gold generation not only helps Ramuizes with his ability, but also econ decks that are out there right now as well. This hero has that good design trait where it'll force deck builders to take another look at the card pool and build around it. There are many cheap item cards out there that could finally find a home in a deck of this type. This is a cool hero and a cool mechanic that I would like to see taken further. The Mad Moon's Arrival, created by Metalhand1000, is a 3 mana improvement. It reads, after the combat phase, remove a charge from the Mad Moon's Arrival. Before the action phase, if there are 0 charges on the Mad Moon's Arrival, destroy all enemy towers. It has 8 charges to start when it comes into play. While it can seem a bit extreme at first, improvement removal is pretty rampant at the moment, so it's probably not too overpowered. I enjoy the idea of one turn kill or Exodia type cards that require preparation and control to reach inevitability. All card games at some point have such cards, and I think Artifact deserves one as well. This would probably have an amazing animation as well. Imagine a giant moon creeping closer every round and then ultimately blowing up. It can bring about new archetypes and maybe even make Mono Green playable since it can have an additional win con now. If I had the option, I would change the card slightly to synergize with itself. I would remove that it can be played on any lane and make it 4 mana, and add that the Mad Moon's Arrival removes a charge from the Mad Moon's Arrival in all lanes. This way, if you have spent mana to set up multiple and different lanes, you get rewarded by speeding up the arrival. Too much? Maybe. An interesting idea overall though, a ticking time bomb for green that synergizes nicely with its color stall options. Monkey King, a green hero with 4 attack, 1 armor and 7 health, created by a guy you saw somewhere. His continuous effect named Jingu Mastery gives him plus 4 regeneration while attacking a hero, a good adaptation of the Phantom Assassin and Sorla Khan concept. However, if I could change it, I would like it to work when being attacked by a hero instead. This is in line with the ideology that green heroes are more defensive. This will essentially let Monkey King have 11 health against your opponent's hero, which is really solid. His signature card is a 9 mana spell called Wukong's Command. It lets you choose an allied hero, then summon 4 Wukong soldiers with stats equal to the chosen hero. 
This card can be really strong as it can provide stats greater than Thunderhide Alpha, although divided between four bodies. Picture playing this in a red-green deck. Four Bristleback statted creeps in a lane would be very strong late game, and by that time Bristleback would have gained more attack and health from items or cards like Emissary of the Quorum, and armor from its own passive. This card could be quite formidable. All that being said, a 9 mana card needs to be able to close out the game on its own to see play, which is why I personally would like the card to be a bit more unique and not just summon stats onto the board. Perhaps a good alternative would be to summon 2 or 3 units instead of 4, but the soldiers gain all modifications that were made to the hero this game. This way, if you copy a Time of Triumph hero for example, the soldiers will also get the Retaliate, Siege, and Cleave buff. But to compensate, we could also make it so that all the negative modifications stay as well. All in all, we are definite fans of this card. It brings some new ideas to the table and is a good take on the Monkey King. Finally, our number one custom card for today is Flip the Flop, a 3 mana green spell submitted by Jijiko that swamps the right and left lane. This is possibly the most outlandish concept that we have seen thus far. Even though realistically we probably won't see it in a future set, I would still like to play with it regardless. It is true that the power the left lane holds is pretty massive. If one person gets the right hero positioning in the first lane and a few early game cards to play there, the game can quickly start snowballing in favor of that player. Because the left lane always becomes the hardest fault lane, a card that allows you to swap the lanes brings in the ability to try and counterplay that snowball effect. So if you are behind in the left lane and ahead on the right, you can swap the lanes to turn the game in your favor. Since both players can include this card, there is a bit of counterplay to the counterplay itself, which not only brings with it more decision making, but makes the card more balanced. A cool card design that is wacky, but still helps the game in a positive way is something that I can respect. And a standout card like that deserves its number one spot. And that does it for this edition of our top 5 custom cards. Let us know in the comments what you think of some of these entries, or if you found something else that deserves a spot here. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.